I'm Scott Stringham. Uh, I'm a storm photographer. I don't call myself a chaser because I don't do any scientific research. I don't check in with NOAA or anything like that. Uh, when I was a little kid, I used to sit out underneath the porch, watch lightning roll off the Ochre Hills in uh, Kearns. That's a lightning strike out on south of end of Stansbury Island. I chased this one from Windover and then down into Rush Valley and then back to Stansbury. This is the last strike of the night. The next one was right over the top of me. I threw my camera in the truck and took off and lightning hit a bush behind me and set it on fire. That's one strike. Yeah, it's a long exposure, but it's one bolt. It was just filled the entire sky. It even went off on the side a little bit. It's big. The closest strike, the one that's on the far right, is about a mile away. I've, been, uh, I've had storms sneak up on me before, so one of the safety things, uh, we use, I use an app called Raindar and it allows you to track where the storms are building up and try to stay away from them. Lightning, lightning can travel more than 10 miles out from the storm and then down. I have an example. Hmm? Raindar. It's on uh, Android. I don't know the one on... Yeah, Raindar. I've got a... It's on the next... Uh, two slides down. I've got the name. So you've got a big metal tripod and camera gear and an umbrella and you're out in the middle of a field in, with a lightning storm close by. It's not the safest thing. It is a high altitude. Oh, good. It's an incredible app. You can drill right down. It'll show you exactly what's going on. When it's raining, it's going to get cold, I have a, you buy a rain sleeve, you can get them at a Acme picture line, just goes over the camera, and you put the camera on the tripod and uh, shoot away. It gets cold, so bring a jacket. The gear I use, I use an infrared remote, as well as a wired one for long exposures at night. The brand of lightning trigger I use is Patchmaster, and I can, that's the URL. I can post this up and share it on the group later. They're about uh, $150. When I do the lightning, I'm doing, as a, doing them as a landscape, so I just use my landscape lenses either. I have a Canon 7D, so I shoot 10 to 24 Sigma, or a 10 to, 20, 10 to 24 Tamron and a Sigma 18 to 200. Bring a lens cloth, your lens is going to get wet and dirty. So maybe put an IR filter on it. Uh, umbrella, I have a big golf umbrella. It's about probably three and a half feet across with multiple layers so that the wind can get through a little bit. And I stand with that behind me, usually, in, so it doesn't get me. What's up? Do you bring a second shooter as a watch? <laughs> uh, we have done group shots. We did one last year. We went out light painting, but a storm rolled in, so we just stood in a big long line. <laughs> Tried to get everyone to separate about 15, 20 feet apart, so if one person got hit, it didn't take everyone out. <laughs> I use, uh, during, during the day, day use NDs and graduated, graduated NDs, NDs to cut down the light, get longer exposures. You really, really need to be for the lightning trigger to pick up less than about a 60th of a second. I also use a polarizer. It darkens the sky during the day, cuts down reflections, so uh, it, it, it saturates the picture. Just like when you do use a landscape polarizer, same thing. Doesn't work too good on the 10 to 24.
because at 10 millimeters, it's so wide, you can see the band of polarization. So it, I don't usually use it on the 10 to 24. My tripod's heavy. It's one of the big Manfrotto, gets this tall, way taller than me, but I'm only 5'6", so. Um, it gets windy. I usually put the legs out and get it low to the ground and then put my camera bag on top of it to hold it down. I've seen the wind take cameras and just flop them on the side. It's not a good sound. At night, I go along, build up a, a lot of lightning shots, and then also, if it's dark and the moon's out a little bit, it looks like daylight after long exposure. Remember to compose. Don't just shoot the lightning. Include it as an element in the landscape. I'm bad at that, too. I'll be like, ooh, it's full of lightning. But there's, it doesn't show how big the lightning is. So I'll use it. I'll zoom out a lot more now and incorporate it as an element. Best time to shoot, just before the storm hits and, and after. During, it's usually going on too much and a bit too dangerous. This is the software I use, Raindar, Weatherbug Spark, a German one. Actually, the German one is actually the best right now. And then NOAA, which is the weather.gov. My settings, most of the time ISO 100, because I'm going to go long exposures, least amount of noise. Sometimes I'll go 800, but usually most of them are, don't go over 400. F8 to F11 keeps the light, so when the lightning flashes, it doesn't burn everything in. If you're at F2.8 at night, you're just going to have a big blob. You can't see any detail in the strength. F8, F11, it's great. I shoot all the way from 10 millimeter to 300. I've had lightning where it's way up on the north end of the lake, 70 miles away, and it looks good at 300. Now for practicals. The storm, this is the after the storm's passed. So the storm was right over the top of me. It passed a little bit. The rain stopped. This is four exposures. It was a really good storm. Yep, four. I composite them. So just keep the camera on the tripod. Just layer them in Photoshop. Did you adjust that later on um, with like Photoshop or something? Yeah. Uh, no, because I shoot it. Uh, this one is F8. At F8, not too much is burned in. But at a 30 second exposure in the city, it's perfect. This is one. Storms passed over. It's gotten the ground all wet. This is out of the Great Salt Lake looking northeast toward Ogden. The little lights there, that's Hill Air Force Base. Full moon, so that it helped illuminate the clouds. That's why I was able to keep it down at ISO 100. And 60 second exposure, lots of time for the clouds to move, especially on a fast storm. Question. Yeah? Do you uh, stop your exposure right after the strike? Or right after you think it's down? Or do you I usually just on, my, on the wired remote, I'll get an exposure and just keep it there. This happened to be. It's a little darker, so that it ended up being 60 second long exposures for what I wanted on the histogram. I just put it on and turn it, let it go. Nope, I let it go for the full 60 seconds. Do you ever do bold when you see the thing let it go? Or are you just If you see the lightning, there's absolutely no way you're going to be able to hit the trigger before. It's done. Lightning's about 100 milliseconds. With the lightning trigger during the day, it's on a Canon 7D, it's about 60 milliseconds. So it has enough time to do the exposure. But if you're doing it with your finger, there's no way you're going to get a hundredth of a millisecond. So you I use bulb and just start it and let it go for the 60 seconds, and then it starts another 60-second exposure. 
So it's like a motor, the motor drive, the continuous shooting, but with the intervalometer. I just have it set for 60 seconds. Camera's in bulb at F8 and bulb, and the intervalometer just does 60 second exposures. You just aim it. This is one during the day. I'm at a place called Falcon Ridge. It's up on 7000 South, and uh, right next, just behind me is the Mountain View Corridor. Same storm, but about 20 minutes later. We don't get the big mammatus like they do in Kansas, but every once in a while we do, every couple of years. This one, this is, uh, I moved a little bit. I, this um, Bacchus is right behind me. In fact, I'm on the shoulder. That's the shoulder. So is that looking towards the plate of the mountain? Sorry. That is, so there's Corner Canyon. There'd be Lone Peak, Twin Peak. That's a big, or Little Cottonwood Canyon in there. Another after the storm. Clears out to the west, usually during our, or during our summer storms, they're really isolated. So they're just 10 miles across or so. Once they go by, clears up. If you're lucky at sunset, get a good sunset. This is out of the Great Salt Lake, Kinnicott. Another one, storm just passed. There's another one down in Kearns. That's the one that did that strike. That's uh, Hercules ATK. I found a really good place to hide. Out south of the dump, there's a gazebo that's big, and you can hide in it. And then when the storm goes by, you can take lots of pictures. And then you get reflections. So there's a lot of pictures from here. This is one of the ones that where it goes out seven miles. Actually, it's 6.78, according to Google Maps. So Kinnicott's right here. Their other new mine is there. This came out, went across. I made my wife take me out last summer after between my two surgeries for my knee replacements and let me shoot for once. It was awesome. It was... It, it was beautiful. This is a uh, 20-second exposure. This foreground, there's a sodium light behind me, a uh, street light. So it li lit up the field a little bit. This is out at a place called Lakeside. It's, you go through the Air Force bombing range. Don't stop. <laughs> this is the uh, railroad causeway that goes from Lucen, which is about another 70 miles, and then back to Ogden. This guy came, I saw him at Windover, coming across uh, the Sil Silver Mountains, and come across and just strike after strike after strike. I have probably 70 just from this one. One hit about right there, and I decided it was time to get down off the mountain. And then after the storm passed, I saw one of the most incredible things I've ever seen, and it, it's coming up. This is at the gate to the Salt Lake Marina. Really cool looking roll cloud coming off of big storm. This is before the storm. They call those motherships. Yes, this is 2100 South, and this is the off-ramp to 2100 South. I, this, this afternoon, I got off work and went and hiked up to the first bench on, at the Mount Olympus and saw this thing coming across. It was still up by Ogden. 
but I could see this, this front and knew what it was, and I just got in my car and raced over to the west side, and it hit not long. It's, it's, it's at I-80, at 215, so at a, a 21, so it's only 20 blocks away. This is a panorama, I think probably 20 or so, vertical, double stacked vertical. It was really tall. Yeah, a little bit of green, dirty. It was one of those smoke days where we get, all, or dust days where we get all the dust. I think it all got hoovered up on the front of that storm. Spiral jetty. Me and Randy head went up to Spiral jetty years ago. It was a perfectly nice day, no clouds at all. Then about 2 o'clock, you could see, start seeing a little bit of clouds, and then this thing developed over about maybe 20 minutes. It came across, and there's people. There's people still way out there. And that's 1,500 feet long, so they're probably, you know, 1,500 feet out. And they just got hammered. Blew one lady's pants off. Nah. Yeah, she had shorts on. And just shorts. <laughs> this is the same storm as the big boom. This is just before the really big one. This is uh, the salt. They harvest the salt in the late summer. So trucks are always going up and down the road. And just added a nice light to the front. Another one of those ones where it reaches out. I think that's about seven miles. I take a base exposure before and check the histogram. The, what? the histogram on the back of the camera. I check to make sure there's no clipping and that the blacks aren't blocked up. Now, the 300 second exposure. What do you do? Maybe you don't. Do you do it the back of the line the noise? Uh, at 100 ISO, yeah, there's not a lot on a 7D. So. Mm -hmm. Now on my XT, there was all kinds of red and green, blue dots all over the place. But on the 7D, and just, just the noise reduction in Lightroom usually gets rid of all those. Hey Scott, you're essentially saying you expose the scene and then just... I use the lightning as an element. That's why I shoot at F8, right. so it doesn't burn in. So I expose for the landscape, and then the lightning's just a bonus. You can have a ton of bolts, it's not going to matter. Oh, yeah. This is all, that's one exposure. Unless those bolts all happen in the same spot. Yes, I have, I have had some where it, they, they're right really close, and you, it's, it does burn in because there is so much. Like that one's a little bit burned in. So another night with almost full moon. I'm really happy when there's a full moon and lightning during the summer. Too bad it only happens three times. Another full moon shot. I exposed for the landscape. Got a little bit of reflection. The lake's so dry over the last two years, it's hard to get them now without getting out for too far. That's Antelope Island. This is at Lee Creek. In fact, that's... Uh, I don't know what that is. That's not Lee Creek. Lee Creek's way over there. You can see the trees or bushes. Trails? Yep, those are airplane trails. So uh, it's cool when they go and move around. When I, one that I did years ago, a guy's like, I wish you would have photoshopped out all the power lines. And it's like, there aren't power lines, dude. They're airplanes. And they add to the picture. So shut up. <laughs> this one is 320. There was a little bit, you can see it's a little bit more noisy. I always think that I'm going to go out and shoot during the day and get really epic lightning shots. Daytime lightning sucks. I've shot hundreds of daytime lightning. That's the best one. And that's like, I had to work on that to bring it out.
They're just not very good. There's not enough, enough contrast because the ambient light's so bright anyway. This is with a, uh, I believe, a six-stop ND to get two seconds. This is out on the south end of Stansbury Island. I shoot uh, AV on Canon or A on Nikon and just expose for the scene. And then just the lightning's just an extra bonus. It's another daylight one. I bought a really cheap ND filter from China and it has a strong magenta cast. This is that one. It was really hard to remove it. This storm came across the Great Salt Lake, blew down one of the uh, olive trees at the marina and scared a whole bunch of tourists. Because it, uh, it's flat. It was perfect. I mean, there was no wind. And then this hit, and it was just 60 miles an hour. This is down here at Utah Lake. When you're going to shoot, you eat a lot of dust. <laughs> Utah Lake dust doesn't taste as bad as Great Salt Lake dust. <laughs> hmm? Way worse. Yeah, they were attacking me with the wind blowing. Oh. Big, big white mosquitoes down here. Oh my gosh. This was actually an hour before, I think, one of the co-op meets. I don't get to Happy Valley often. This was a couple weeks ago, one of our new dust storms. Just lots of cool colors. The blues from the clouds. I didn't really do much to this. Yeah, everyone's talking about the cat. It looks like a chupacabra. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's my fit, and that's uh, more dust. The lake's so low, this is the dust that's blowing off of Farmington Bay. It's gross. Actually, no, I do have a couple good daylight lightnings. This is with the trigger and not a long exposure. This is uh, Old Bingham Highway at Bacchus. That's Bacchus. But they're still not really spidery like nighttime shots. Uh, within the last four years or so. I didn't do, our, I did like two shoots last year. That was it. So, another sunset shot. This is with the lightning trigger out on. Uh, Falcon Ridge, a lot of sunflower seeds moving, moving around. You can see the condos. This is the cool thing that happened. So the storm moved off, one of those narrow, 10-mile wide lightning storms. Full moon, I was leaving to go out. The rain had hit so much, uh, it washed out the road and I hit a rock and broke my tire. Oh. I'm still 15 miles from pavement. So as I was cussing at my poor driving and not seeing this rock in a puddle, I looked over at the storm, set my camera up to take pictures, and I saw like this glow. That's a moon bow. Oh. So the moon is so bright, it's creating a rainbow but with moonlight. So it was just like this white, you can see the colors a little bit, but just like this white band. And then lightning happened. That's no composite, that's actually how it happened. ISO 400, 142 seconds. F8. Nope. I'd shoot at zero and just Exposed for the scene. So I, uh, uh, I do a lot of nighttime photography. 
I have a group called Friday Night Photogs. Hopefully, going to start up again this year. We do nighttime photography, and uh, so I'm pretty good at judging exposures anyway. But all you have to do is shoot in bulb, stop the exposure, look at the histogram. If it's all up on the right or on the left, it's too dark. You can't recover that. It'll look really noisy. So I try to move that peak at least maybe a quarter of the way over. It's got it. Channel 2. Channel 4. Mm-hmm. Oh, question. So you, obviously you're talking about night, you can see more of the detail of the bolt. Are you, when you're talking about the, the light trigger, the 60 millisecond, is that also contributing because you get to see the whole duration of the bolt? Mm-hmm. Well, it, yeah, it's the trigger sees it, start, and it takes that 60 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds or so to, to hit. It starts as soon as it sees it. It only really works good at dusk and like when it's dark storm. Regular daylight, it's never, it, there's not enough contrast. So that's probably where you're missing some of those fingers during that delay. Oh, I've done bulb, even at, during the day. You, you just, they're, because they get, they get so faint they just blend into the background. You just can't see them. This one uh, is about 10 feet wide and probably 8 feet high, hanging in Channel 4's um, lobby, their main stairwell, because that's their antenna. If you zoom in, you can see Randy Head uh, in the Temple of the Birds. You can see his camera lit up. So this is the second strike, immediately following the first strike. And it did a lot of fingers. <coughs> After that one, that's when I decided to go back <laughs> and hide. F8 again. And I missed that place, mostly for the storms. Sunsets are great. A lot of you can go longer exposures and just just keep on going. Just shoot an AV and I just put it in continuous and put the put the trigger the intervalometer on and just let it go until it builds up to about 30 seconds and I'll go into bulb. This is from the Great Salt Lake Marina. So, another question. I do. Uh, you should do 10 a lot. Yes. I do uh, um, turn on live view because at 10 millimeters it has a hard time getting focus. So I'll just put on live view and focus and then just turn autofocus off. Same thing for night photography. But when, when they're out, this is, I'm at the Salt Lake Marina and that lightning's on the north end of Stansbury. So I think this is probably 41 millimeters. So I've zoomed in quite a bit. I have uh, the 18 to 20, 18 to 200. So with live view at your night photography, does that work pretty well? If it's a very dark scene or not really? What? To focus with live view when it's pretty dark, does it work pretty well? Or if you can throw it as If I'm in the city or anywhere that I can see Kinnicott, I aim at Kinnicott and focus on the lights. Just, uh, I put it in manual focus and just uh, manually adjust it. I zoom in, zoom in up to 10x, and focus, turn off autofocus so when you start to go back to shoot, it doesn't try to hunt again. So remember, big thing, turn off your autofocus. And then if you're going to recompose you with a different focal length, you have to refocus again. On my lenses anyway. I don't know about L series. Storm just melting. So we're hiding inside of a building that's being built out on 2100 South. And I'm facing south, and the lightning hit on the north end of the building and then arced over the top, and it scared me a little bit, and I kicked my tripod.
I just, it, it didn't tip. It just, I just kicked it. Like, oh, crap. Yeah, no, it didn't tip over. But it did move quite a bit. The reason you want to check where the storms are, I got involved watching a storm behind Stan, uh, Antelope. And this guy snuck up on me. That strikes about half a mile away. My hair did stick up a little bit. <laughs> That's that on uh, the road to nowhere, so uh, just north of Temple of the Birds. And that's not even the closest one. So I check my phone a lot more to see where the, where the cells are building up. Because that was, I mean, it's a great shot, but it wasn't very fun. I, I, I second thought everything. I went, oh, this is not cool. No, landlines do. If you had a copper, but a cell phone, it's, it's not connected to anything. It's just air. So, yeah, you can use your cell phone in a storm. Just don't use a landline, because the copper, it can go through and shock your brain. There's, that's actually happened. Yeah, don't use a landline. Whoever has a landline left. <laughs> <laughs> we, use, we use Ethernet, so... On the weather bug app on Spark, it gives warnings. And within it's like, I think, three or four miles, it's like, seek shelter now, and it's red, and like flashes a little bit, and I'm like, it's time to go. Take pictures. <laughs> but when the cell is right over the top of you, that's not fun. That's another close one. This is about a quarter mile away. I'm up on the little pull-off on the top of Bacchus, about 700 south. I'd just gotten some great shots to the southeast, and one happened way back over by Kinnicott, so I just happened to turn to get that cell, and then this thing happened in front of me, and I went, whoa, that was really close. I should probably get ready to leave <laughs> after I get a couple more exposures. <laughs> No, nope, this is gone. This, is, this one's actually is probably four or five years. This is my old XT. Daylight with an ND and a polarizer. When they're really close, they have, they, you can see the, the fingers coming off. So That's the one that was really, really close. I think it was less than an eighth of a mile. And then some of these were right over the top of me. I could see them. And that's when I left. Is that water on your yeah, the wind switched. In just the 19 seconds, it was clear. And the lightning hit. And I let it finish the exposure. And then the wind hit. So, wind switched direction and started to really, really rain. You can see the rain here just down the street. Any questions? Yes, I am crazy. <laughs> so will you take this out? Yeah. Like a group, you know, lighting photo walk? I think it's okay. There's supposed to be a storm outside, right? What? I said it's supposed to be a big storm There are. Um, spring storms are not good. There's a lot. There's too much rain. So by the time the storm, the lightning, can, you can see it, you're already in the rain, and now you're soaked, and now you become a really good conductor. So I don't shoot during the spring storms unless it's So what's the best time of year? July, August, September. Most of my really good shots are uh, late August and up to, we shot one that lasted about 12 hours out over the Red Sea Lake. It started at sunset and we ran out of batteries about four in the morning and it was still going. Wow. <laughs> we call it the Energizer Bunner, Energizer Bunny. And those um, are the best. Question, so you said you're joking, but that compared to like the Lightning. 
Uh, a lot of times, because when they come over to Great Salt Lake, a lot of them they'll come from Dugway and hit uh, Stansbury Island and Antelope, so they're on a southwest to northeast track. So I'm usually on the south end, on the south of them. So when they're hitting Stansbury and Antelope, the summer ones usually contained really close together. They, I don't usually see a lot of spooky ones that come off. Usually the spooky ones are spring storms. Did I hear you say that you see the Yeah, maybe until about, oh, maybe 25 seconds, and then I'll switch to all. And then just go long. Usually at that thing. 100 ISO. How does your lightning trigger work? The lightning trigger works like this. Does anyone have a flash? <laughs> well, it needs to do the pulse. Oh, okay. I think it does like that. I like the flashlight that pulses. It has two lights. Go ahead and hit it. So it won't sense this little light. What? You're saying it has to be a quick pulse? Uh, it, it, yeah. Because if I've tried it like, oh, I'll see if I can make it go with my flashlight to see if it's working, uh -huh. and it doesn't work. We're in the studio. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. It just triggered the camera. <laughs> so it just goes into the AV port. And the cannon just goes right here. It goes into what? The wired remote. Right. Okay. Yeah. On the 7D, it's at the bottom one. It's got like oh, so four little posts in it. Or... So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. 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 No, I only use it like dust, and if I'm out trying to think I'm going to get good daylight lightning, which I never do, I'll, I always bring it, but most of the time, by the time the good lightning starts happening, it's dark, and you can see everything. Why would it work in the dark, you say? Because uh, I go long exposure, so I can expose for the landscape. And with F8, 100 ISO, as soon as it gets a little bit dark, you're like 60 seconds, 320 seconds. We've done. Heavy tripod helps. When you do composites, are you doing anything special with lightning loads, or are you basically matching? Light, lightning. So I have my base one.
Scott, how do you know, I mean, I, I guess we're not even a lot of experience, but how do you know when you, when you see a storm coming that it's going to be spinning out lightning? You don't. Know, there's it's just blood. I know so many times. Come back with nothing, because it's like an issue of another sunset. I don't know if I'm playing sunset. I'm not lightning, so I've been scummed a lot. Is there a certain kind of storm or intensity of storm that you know, you're looking for? Uh, on the radar, when it's got a lot of red and purple, it's time to go out and door shoot. Especially when they start up over Dugway. When they, I'll watch them throughout the day, uh, just on my phone or at work, on the, you know, through the browser. I'll see the storms come across, and you can see them clear out in Nevada, that wave of energy come across. And if it makes it past the West Desert, a lot of them they'll get out to Gold Hill and Windover and just die. You can just see them evaporate. But if they make it past the West Desert, I know I've got about three hours before they get to the west side of the lake. So I eat dinner, and then get ready. Yeah? Have you, uh, I saw a lot of these from Utah. Have you gone outside of Utah to take a lot of photos? I have not. My, my wife's from Missouri, and she just- Missouri's got some good stuff. She talks about just how we made this one over there. They are epic. And I would like to go there. Uh, the last two years I've been pretty incapacitated. I've had osteoarthritis. The last year I had both my knees replaced, and now I can go out. But Missouri, a lot of theirs are uh, more spring. They move up north in closer to June and July. So I was thinking maybe South Dakota would be really fun. Anything else? Come on. So are you starting your party group again? I would. I am. Probably end of June. Oh, and we're going to switch to Saturdays. I've got day nights now. <laughs> day nights. So are you changing the name of the group from Friday Night Code Dogs to Saturday Night? <laughs> yes, but it'll still be the same URL because it's stuck. But the name was changed to Saturday Night Code Dogs. It'll still have the same URL. And uh, my daughter is 18 and 19. She's not going to be hanging out too much longer, so I've definitely got a lot of Saturday evenings available. So I've up to three miles walking now, so once I get to up to four consistently, then I'll start it up again. I need to be able to carry cameras and stuff, so. And how do you know about that? Friday night photons, the photons is with a F. No, I mean, it's on Facebook. Oh, yeah, it's on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, I just Facebook. Okay. We'll post a link in the description. Uh, so you guys can find out. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I've got a Google slideshow of this, so I'll post that up with the URLs that you need. So, so will there be a link from this Google on your guys' page? Yes. On Facebook? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll publicly share it. Cool. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs>